Okay, I have just opened up my Python shell in idle, and I hope you're doing the same thing. Please open up Python right now. I'd like you to do these uh, exercises with me so you've got examples of how this works. Now, I've opened it up. I'm in my interactive mode. I could type in specific commands here, you know, like x equals 5 and then print x. But what I'm going to do is create a a file. I'll do file, new file, and let me make this window a little bit bigger. And this is going to be where I'm going to put the definition of my class for school. So I'm going to type it in over here, save it, run it, and then do some more things in the shell. So everybody go do file, new file, and then in that new file, let's type the following. I'm going to do class school and then a colon. When I hit enter, notice it's indented. I start defining my various uh, functions here. The first one I'm going to define is the init function that's uh, going to be required in all of my classes because that's what gets executed whenever I create an object of type school. So I do def space, I hit the underscore key twice INIT underscore twice again, and then I give it my parameters. I will always put self as the first parameter. Now, what did we decide we wanted for a school? The school's got to have a name, school's got to have a city, school's got to have a state. Put the colon in, I get indented a little further. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to use that self parameter and say, for any object, create yourself a data field called name, a variable called name that's different for one school as opposed to another school as opposed to another school. Each one will have its own copy. And I'll do self.name equals the name that gets passed in as a parameter. Then I'll do self.city equals the city that was passed in as a parameter. Then I'll do self.state equals the state that was passed in as a parameter. Then I'll do self.students which wasn't passed in as a parameter. And I'll say, let's just make this be an empty list. So I've just opened the square bracket and closed the square bracket. That's all I'm going to put in here for now. So I'm going to save this. Save. It's going to want a name. I'm going to give it a name, school, and then run it. Remember, we can do that with run, run module, or else press function key F5. When I run it, it goes over here to my Python shell. It's now run this. I now have a class called school. You didn't see anything happen because I didn't have it print anything out. But I could now create an object that's of type school. Let's do that. Let's create a school Newman equals school. Let's see if I just do this and don't give it any parameters, what happens? Oh, error message. You're missing three required positional arguments, a name, a city, and a state. Okay, see over here, name, city, state. Notice it didn't complain about self, because I never type that in when I'm creating it. That gets put in automatically by Python. So I'll do Newman equals school Isidore Newman, New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, if I try and print out Newman, print Newman, what will it print out? It says, oh, it's a school object. Not terribly useful because I haven't told that school object how to print itself, but it is a school object. I, how can I tell that? I could say, what's the type of variable Newman? Oh, it's a class school. Okay, if I do Newman.city, it'll say, oh, I know that. That's New Orleans. Let's do type of Newman.city. That's a string. Let's do Newman.students, the empty list. Length of Newman.students. Zero. Okay. So I've been able to create 
an object of type school. I could create another one. Let's do my school, which is uh, Hawkins School in Ohio. Uh, it's Hawkins School in Ohio, so I'm going to say Hawkins equals school Hawken Cleveland Ohio and now if I do Hawken dot state says it's in Ohio if I do Hawken dot students gives me the empty list you can create your own school right now in fact why don't you do that now I'm going to go back over here to my definition of the class and still indented within the class but not indented within the init I'm going to create myself a new function I'm going to say def add a student I have to put self first and then what am I going to pass in the name of a student put in my colon and now I'm indented under here what do I want this one to do I want it to take self dot students which is a list that has starts out empty but it's going to have in it anything that uh, uh, anything that we've added to it already since that's a list I can do an append to it I can append to any list what do I want to append this student that was passed in as a parameter that's all I want to do for this I'm going to save it now I'm going to run it again and I'm going to recreate my uh, Newman and my Hawken ones. Since I've redone the definition of, of them, they're no longer valid. So I'm going to say Newman equals school. Here I'm going to copy and paste what I did before. So copy that. Paste it down here. Newman is this school. Hawken is this school. I know I can copy and paste. I know I can do this. Copy. Come down here and paste. Okay. Now, if I look at Newman.students, empty list, Hawken.students, empty list. But if I do Newman.add a student, what does it need for parameters? Over here, it said it's got self and student. Self gets put in automatically by Python, so I have to give it a student name. So, who is a student going to uh, Newman? Uh, let's put in Ram, since he's one of our students that goes there. Now, if I do Newman.students, I've got a list that has one element in it. And if I add another one, Newman.add a student and put in Philip and I do Newman.students that list now has two names in it but what happens if I look at Hawken.students that one's still empty it's called students but each object has its own copy of it the copy in Newman has Ram and Philip the copy in Hawken doesn't have anybody at all Okay, now let's go in and create another function. Let's do the get time zone function that we talked about in the previous video. So I'm going to do def get time zone self, and I don't need to pass anything else in. I always need the self, but to get the time zone, I want to be able to say, hey, Newman, what time zone are you in? Hawkin, what time zone are you in? Um, pick one of your other schools. St. Mark's, what time zone are you in? Gilman, what time zone are you in? I don't need to pass anything in. The school knows its own state, so let's do it from that. I'm going to check if self.state equals California, then I'm going to return a value of uh, Pacific for the time zone. L if else if self dot state equaled L A for Louisiana I'm going to return central and I'm gonna put one more state in here L if self dot state equals 
New York, return Eastern, and then I'm going to put in else in. If it wasn't one of those states that I already knew about, else return unknown. Okay, not passing it any input, but it knows who it is. It knows its own state and it's going to check this. So let's save this. File Save. Now run the module. Create my Newman again. Newman equals school Isidore Newman New Orleans LA um, and if I do Newman dot state okay the state is Louisiana so I should be able to do Newman dot get time zone notice how I put parentheses here for state I just said Newman dot state because that was a variable defined as part of this object here get time zone as a function to call functions in Python you pass a parameter list this one doesn't have any parameters so it's just empty parentheses what do I get it comes back with central let me create Hawken again my own school here in Cleveland Ohio Hawken equals school Hawken Cleveland Ohio Hawken dot get time zone comes back unknown why is it unknown well let's see what Hawken state is Hawken dot state Ohio and that's not one of the ones we defined over here so you should be able to play around a little bit with classes and objects you need to know that a class is a blueprint for the variables and the functions that any object that's a member of that class has available to it each object has its own copy of the variables and each object can execute any of the functions from within the class go ahead and do a little bit more playing in idle on your own until you're sure you understand this take the quiz look at the programming assignment go look at the other discussion databases that I've set up so that you can interact with your fellow students about these topics some of you understand object-oriented programming really well because you've done it with other languages extensively for others of you you may not have as much experience you all need to know this happy programming <laughs>